Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun and play with a little bit of high voltage. So what I've got here is one of these negative ion generators. And this one runs on 12 volts, as I hope you can see from the case that I pulled it out of. This is the uh, negative side. This is the positive side. And we've got our power supply set up to put in 12 volts. And I'm going to show you that right now. Hold on, I'm going to take you out of the holder here. So there's our power supply set for 12 volts. And I will activate it. And you can see it shows there's no current. Well, there is current it's just very small so if we come over here can't really see anything happening but what you can do is kind of lick your finger get it close and you can feel a cool breeze that's one way to know it's working another way to know it's working is to check for an arc so that's what we're going to do we are going to check for an arc before we do that, I need to tell you, this is high voltage. High voltage is dangerous. High voltage can hurt or kill you. So I don't recommend you do this. But that being said, have fun with it. So we can figure out the voltage required to jump the gap. We'll call it V gap. It is equal to the distance in centimeters, distance in centimeters, times 30,000. So, if we put this guy here, and we put a scale underneath of it, it'll be hard to get the wires to sit nicely. Might have to break out a piece of tape. <laughs> But you get the idea. So this thing's off now. It's safe to play with. And we put that right on one centimeter. And we bring in some sort of probe. And we find out the distance that it takes to get, to bridge that gap. Okay. Say it takes one millimeter. For an example. So our distance in centimeters is 0.1 times 30,000, right? Well, that would give us a, a V-gap of 3,000 volts. Are you with me so far? Okay. So let's set up our experiment. We'll get our negative ion generator here. And it looks like we're going to need some tape. I have some tape. And then we'll bring in our scale. Probably should have put that under the tape, huh? Now there might be some parallax. I'm trying to look directly over top, and that is right on the one centimeter mark. So I'm going to get another piece of tape, tape down our scale, check it again because I just saw it move. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the camera angle. Hang on. Okay, so we got that adjusted. For our probe, we're simply going to use an old cheapy Chinese uh, multimeter probe that I took the end off of, and I'm going to attach that to the ground of our power supply. Now, I'm going to turn off the lights here. I 
I'm going to power up the generator. It is now powered up. And I'm going to bring this in until we get an arc. There we go. So we are arcing to my eyes at about one millimeter. So that is 3,000 volts. Let's do it again. There we go. Now, can we bring it out any? No. It is right around a millimeter. If I come out more, look at that, we can get about, uh, we're losing it about two millimeters. All right, so I'm gonna bring the lights back on. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that once we have bridged the gap, the air is ionized. That's what an ionizer does. It uses coronal discharge to ionize the air. But once we have breached that gap, the voltage required is much less. So we know we're looking at about 30,000 volts. And once again, there's your formula. The voltage across the gap is the distance in centimeters times 30,000. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Learn something about high voltage and arcs. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.